That must be the helicopter Steve was talking about. Lopez! I thought you were dead! Get off my back! I'll go. There is something I need from Pachamama! Eh, mi venganza. Venganza? Recuerda que los terroristas bombardearon con jurencia hace tres años. Los terroristas al intentar bombardear al gobierno mataron a muchos civiles. Sí, y esa bomba mató a mi querida familia y las guerrillas de la montaña. Fueron responsables de ese bombardeo. Ese día juré que me vengaría por la muerte de mi familia. Ahora, tú sabes por qué les odio tanto. ¿Dónde están las bases de operaciones secretas? Espera, López. Yo sinceramente no sé nada. Es verdad, tenemos contactos con ellos, pero yo no los conozco bien. Yo no sé dónde están sus bases secretas. Entiendo. Entonces, tú no me sirves de nada. No me dejas alternativa. ¡Tenéis que morir todos! And just when it seemed like we might have finally found a way to get down to Independence Square to stop the oncoming civil war, Aconcagua decides to throw up one final roadblock in our way in the form of the revenge-driven Lopez. And we finally get some further indication about why he is helping the military and trying to get Pachamama. And while I can kind of sympathize with him, he just seems to have gone completely crazy since it seems that Pachamama is not going to be of any use to him. Now we are going to have to find some way to get around him, and as Julia mentioned, it definitely would be good if we could maybe turn down the lights a bit so we can be a little bit less visible on this very open roof here. So to do that, as Kanto mentioned, we are going to need to distract him. And to do that, we are going to have to use someone as bait. In this case, we are going to have to use Pachamama. Now, the good thing is that I was able to figure out that you can kind of escape back and forth to get out of the uh, field of bullets, but if you do manage to get caught up on the geometry, you can still pretty much get shot up. So the general idea here is that you want to have Lopez facing one direction and run up behind him so you can get from one piece of cover to another. Because on the far wall here, we are able to find what appears to be an electrical panel. And yeah, as you might assume, this is how we are going to be able to take out the rooftop lights. Thing is, though, that Kato doesn't really have anything to cut through these wires, but we do have Julia and her handy dandy combat knife. It's just that we are going to have to resort which way Lopez is facing. And that's where Kato is going to come into play here. That we do have to deal with Lopez's periodic rapid fire uh, shooting of the LMG he has. All in all, though, dealing with him shooting at you is not terribly difficult uh, as long as you realize just how his attention is drawn and you know, how to not get shot by him. Because while Pachamama, or being at the distance that Pachamama is at, allows her to easily skate around bullets, yeah, you kind of already saw that Kato pretty much got shot up being at close range, so it can be a, a little bit dangerous. Still, after one more volley of fire, we can now safely cut the power. Get the 
diablos está pasando? ¡Mierda! ¡Alguien ha estropeado la luz! Now, while that does limit Lopez's field of vision, there's still a much larger problem here, and the fact that it seems the only way we're going to be able to get to the other opposing roof where the helicopter is, we are going to have to use that little service elevator he used to get up here. Well, he is still very much stuck in place guarding it. He knows that's our only ticket off the roof, and yeah, he is not going to be moving. Still... Something that we weren't able to look at since we would have been under fire is this one final crate on the uh, far side of the roof over here. It is slightly different from the other ones because it has a weird mesh pattern on it. And that is due to the netting that is on top of it. Now while Pachamama herself isn't able to get the net off of it, we could technically use maybe Julia's knife to cut it off, but I think that would kind of ruin the, the purpose that we are going to use the net for. So, I'm going to have to have the strong, muscular Kato make his way over and grab that for us. And while I do take the scenic route, mostly because I don't want to get shot by Lopez, I guess we could take a moment to kind of reflect on... I think the... The, I guess the the good way they handled Lopez as a villain. Like, sure, he was, you know, treacherous and a traitor to us, but he was just kind of an innocent bystander that was caught up in the ongoing civil war and strife of the country. Like, yeah, maybe he wasn't proactively fighting the government, but you know, he he didn't deserve what he got because of the civil war and terrorist activities going on around him. Yeah, now that we have the net to possibly restrain Lopez, we do have this cracked wall here that allows us to climb our way a little upwards. And reaching the, the ledge here, we are at a prime location to snatch up Lopez in this net. Kato starts to take the beating of a lifetime from Lopez. It's now up to our main man, Steve, to try to save the day, even though we've consequently been treating him like kind of shit throughout the entire game. But he, he finally gets to save the day here by fixing the lights with his handy-dandy toolkit. Right away. 
So it seems that Lopez had one final trump card up his sleeve. There's now a three minute timer before this entire base goes up and have a big pillar of fire in. To make matters worse, the elevator that we would have used to cross over is no longer here. Thankfully, if you were pretty observant during the flyover at the start where they showed you pretty much what was on this entire map, you would notice this crane, and the crane has something useful for us. Pretty unexpected. Uh, the detonator has uh, already kind of gone off in some areas of the base, so I don't want to crawl across that girder and all those open flames. Instead, it seems that the explosions that are going on right now have unhinged this pipe even more so. And by drenching ourselves in the water that is pouring out, should be enough of a buffer to at least allow us to maybe make our way over the girder without becoming covered in third degree burns. But yeah, it's a good showing of, you know, it's not, it's not the tools that have made us survive all this time, it's our teamwork and camaraderie-manship and Working together that has really allowed us to finally successfully make our way off of this dreaded mountain of Aconcagua. Look! 
conflict has not broken out yet. It looks like we made it in time. Pachamama! Pachamama está viva! ¿Qué? Es cierto! ¡Es Pachamama! just started. A presidential election followed under UN monitoring and Pachamama was inaugurated as president. This is the whole story of my own experiences during the incident. So with that, democracy has been brought to Marusa. Our party is mostly safe and sound, and there is something of a measure of positivity with that ending, though it's really hard to look past the fact that the CIA were very much in, 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 enthralled with the uh, getting behind Pachamama, possibly getting in control of Marusa. And really, is democracy the end-all solution to all of the country's problems? It, it's hard to say, because it's fictional, but at least within the context of the story, it was a happy ending, so there is that. Now, final thoughts on the game. It has a lot of positive things going for it, considering when it was made. It uh, is pretty much a, a prototype to you know, other survival adventure games like uh, Raw Danger or Disaster Day of Crisis, and it's... It's an interesting approach to the, the genre in the fact that it is a point-and-click adventure game. But it does have some negatives. I mean, the story is pretty generic. Uh, the, the voice acting is fine. The story, the writing is fine. It's nothing amazing. And all in all, it's a pretty short adventure that you can probably get through in about three hours. And as far as I know, it doesn't have multiple endings. But it's fine. It's it's an alright game, and it's a, it's a bit of a shame that more people weren't able to play this and it didn't get a further release. But hopefully you did enjoy my, my tour of the game. Hopefully, maybe if you get a chance, you can play it yourself. Uh, as to what I might be playing next, it's a bit hard to say, but hopefully you will stay tuned for that, and hopefully uh, you enjoyed this trip through Aconcagua. <laughs>